If the base of the body rests, the pelvis feels relatively stable, whether you're on a chair or on the floor. You can always let the legs extend away, the bent legs or the, yeah, the feet on the floor if you're on a chair, knees towards or on the floor if you're sitting or on a cushion. You've got that triangulating going on. So the base happens as much as you create it. And then you might find, particularly as you begin to settle or the body begins to become accustomed to the idea of sitting, that not only does the pelvis feel like it spreads, but there might be very subtle movement if you put your attention there as you breathe. So depending on how you're sitting and how well established you are in sitting. There might be a soft widening almost, or just the feeling of widening between the two sit bones across the pelvic floor. There may not be anything at all. There's also the instruction that comes in a lot of letting the pelvis rest on the exhale. And if you're like me, you hear an instruction like that, or you read an instruction like that, and you go, okay. And you try and do something. But the trick's almost to relax and get out of the way. And then see if that's a valid instruction for you. It probably also brings up the question, okay, so what about the inhale? So you might find that the pelvic structure, if you like, the pelvic form opens a little or expands a little, either between the kind of pubic bone area and the sacrum can move subtly apart on the in-breath. Or the kind of pair of ischiums, the sides of your pelvis, the big structure, might play a little. Again, there may be no sensation there at all, and that's okay, because no sensation is kind of a sensation <laughs> in a roundabout way. So you're just feeling that first gesture of the base of the body and what it means. And you might find that there's almost the quality of an organ rather than a skeletal form. So there's a pulse or a subtle play around the hips, around the groin, around the bottom of the pelvic floor. And you can imagine the sit bones are bigger than they are. They perhaps extend out behind you, back and down like heels. That you can rest into. And if that pelvis is settling and content there, alive there, so there's a soft uncurling or unfurling or soft unwinding of the spine. And if you let that relax the shoulders, almost as the spine softly lengthens, so the shoulders drop. Then your hands can rest where you place them, whether it's on the knees, on the thighs, or in the lap. The initial instructions in Kumde are usually palms down, although they do vary in the later texts.
And although the body is upright, there's no rigidity or push in the chest area. It's just very quiet and soft there. And there's perhaps a softening to the back of the neck, the throat. And there's just that sense almost of the head being drawn up as much as the pelvis drops. Could you also entertain the idea that the head's perfectly above the pelvis? So the two are in balance. Rather than the head leaning forwards of the pelvis or rocking, pardon me, rocking back. Perfect. And then similarly to the play in the pelvis, you might have some play in the rib cage or the sides, the back. So there may be some movement as you breathe. And if you start with simple, easy breaths, and notice where you feel them, you can be quite precise with yourself. Where is the sensation? And then we fine tune the aperture through which breath comes. So with that nice placement of the head and the softness to the throat, just allow the jaw to relax enough for the lips to come very slightly apart. And then the tip of the tongue rests on the upper palate behind the top teeth. The breath then moves through both nose and mouth. So there is a sensation to breathing or a sensation if we were to label it, we'd call breathing. In the same way we feel and relax other sensations in the body, could you feel and relax the breath? Just treat it as another sensation for the moment. And then just allow a very soft quality of extra length through that second gesture of the spine rising. Relax the sides of the base of the skull, the top of the neck really on the sides. Allow the shoulders to really relax and then let the chin gently, gently fall forwards. Keep the flow of breath, keep the freedom through the throat or through that central line. And then gently bring the head up. And gently down. Low on the breath as you inhale. Let the kind of inner eye follow the breath down as the external eye lifts, the head comes up. And then vice versa, as you exhale, the breath can come up and out as the head bows forwards. 
A little bit of opposition. You're breathing in and down as the head comes up. You're breathing up and out as the head comes down. Nice easy flow. The gentlest of movements or the quietest of movements, how we ought to label it. If indeed you want to. So you're not forcing anything. Good. And then the next time your chili comes down, just allow your head to come back to centre. Perfect. And then very gently turn the head from side to side. Again, there's no rush. And if you want to coordinate with breathing, you could think of turning all your exhale and returning to the centre on the inhale. Or you can just test the water of the neck and maybe linger on one side, in which case just let the breath flow. Excellent. At some point, returning to centre. Goody. So, if you bring one arm out to the side, doesn't matter which way. This is known as static arm now. And then you bring the other arm out directly forwards. You create a soft line of length through each, a soft length length without locking anything. Quieten the shoulders a little. Feel the back of the neck. That's it. Now your front arm, your active arm, moves up. As it gets to vertical, you can softly lengthen. How much you put into that, I'll leave up to you. And then it moves back. Kind of go with your range of movement, don't force anything. It might even whoops, brush the floor or the furniture in my case. And then slowly back up. So that's the movement of the arm. The other arm, the free arm, stays static. So the head bows forwards now, but you're keeping the length through the body. Now, as the arm comes up, the head slowly comes up with it and inclines towards that arm. You almost affectionately touch your ear to your arm. And then as the arm goes back, the head can tilt very slightly back, be careful. Looking up a little and rolling the ear or other ear to the other shoulder. The chin drops forwards, back to that hanging forwards position as your moving arm comes directly ahead. Twice more like that, the arm comes up, the head moves towards the arm. As the arm goes back, the head rolls softly back, but not far. Over towards the other shoulder. Chin dropping softly forwards as the arm comes ahead of you once more. And then one more round for yourself. Once the head's hanging forwards, the arms slowly move through space to rest on your knees. And once they touch down and settle, so the head slowly comes up. It gives you the kind of sequence of it. Just allow yourself to feel. 
that sensation come into your awareness for your awareness to rest on sensation. And relax. If you need to adjust the legs at all and resettle, you can do, or if you're happy sitting for another round. So it's the same arms, one to the side, one forwards. Head will bow forwards to begin, but now rather than the arm coming up, it moves down and just past the knee. At the same time, the head rolls towards the opposite static shoulder. Very gently lean back of the head as the arm comes up to the side behind you and up. Head inclines towards the arm as it gets to vertical and then head and arm come forwards together. Heads rolling towards the static arm as the moving arm comes down past the knee. As that moving arm comes up behind you, so the head rolls softly back, don't stray. As it gets to vertical, so your ear is near the moving arm, and the head and arm can move down in tandem to rest ahead. One more round, head moving away from the moving arm as the arm drops. and then towards the arm as it comes to vertical and then both down together and once again rest the hands once they land and settle so you can bring the head up allowing the, what was the moving arm to come to the side, so the other arm out. It's exciting, isn't it? Then the other arm comes forwards, head bows gently forwards. Straight in now, the arm can come up, the head moves towards the arm. Soft length as the arm goes back, so the head can roll lightly back towards the static arm as the arm comes down past the knee. And as the arm comes up to horizontal ahead of you, so the chin drops. Again, I'm coming up head towards arm. Arm gently back, head rolling softly back, be careful. All the way around towards your static arm. As I'll come forward, so chin drops. One more time. Now, rather than coming down this time, rather than adding the pause, just go the other way. So once you've completed that third circuit, so the arm can come down and the head can move away from the arm towards the static shoulder. Heads rolling back as the arm's coming up behind you. And ear to arm as it comes to vertical. Arm and head drop forwards. 
I'm moving back as head moves uh, towards the other shoulder, I'm getting lost. Head rolling back as ear comes to upright arm. Head and arm hanging forwards together. Repeat one more time. Try not to run away and go fast, as I did just then. Stay in it. It's the last circuit you'll be glad to know. And as you come back to centre there, so again the hands can rest. Take your time if you're still moving. And the head comes up last of all. Dun, 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 dun. If you can, settle the shoulders. Softest of breaths. Light, even breaths through nose and mouth. If you feel the heart centre, the kind of energy of the upper body, not literally on the surface, but behind the sternum, within your kind of subtle body, within the sensation you call the body, rather than any physical entity, it's a feeling, it's a sense. But that heart centre, the energetic heart centre, just be aware of it. Breath stays flowing. You could be well anchored in your base. You've got a quality of attention in the heart center. Then find the head centre, so a little down from the crown, back from the third eye, where that horizontal and vertical biceps, kind of the head centre in these teachings. So it's not the third eye spot, it's back in the head. Kind of the centre of the head. Again, it's just a feeling. And while the breath flows, can you softly imagine that the head centre and the heart centre ease away from each other a little? So the neck is just the conduit between those two centres. It's almost a concertina or giraffe-like quality, it might be a better image the shoulders dropping away and the space between those two centers, head center and heart center. The quiet ease around the throat, the neck and the internal passageway between them, that kind of center line also has a feeling tone to it. So the energetic feeling is most prominent where the kind of two collarbones meet in that little groove, the very base of the neck or base of the throat, that low vulnerable part of the throat. But rather than looking at it in isolation, look at it in relation to the head and heart. 
the throats that go between it, the conduit, the channel. Let those three be in cooperation. Shoulder blades relaxed. Soft, soft openness in the center of the chest. Jaw, eyes, breath, sensation and openness. 